Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange doing political commentary for the media speaks. And for some reason, I have absolutely no music coming out of my stereo. I don't know if it's Crystal, but you don't get no uh, fancy theme music today. I don't know what happened. But here's what we do have. Although, Christelle, we do have to get this fixed for the dumbdy of the day. Um, we got a lot of stories to get to. And we also have these. Uh, time is running out, so we need to get out there for Trump. Um, they're two for five. Uh, me, well, five dollars or two for seven. Although you can get one free without giving me a penny. And I'll tell you how after the show. Um, Russia's top spin doctor says impudent U.S. behavior could have nuclear implications. Now, this is kind of important here for a, a big reason. In a nutshell, here's how the Russian thing, the Russian problem that we're facing has come to be. Now, Putin, by the way, is not a good man. He's somebody who, while he is, you know, maybe religiously speaking, Russian Orthodox, a good man, he is... He's, he's KGB for crying out loud. That's the uh, what the CIA of, uh, of the Secret Service of the former Soviet Union, and we know what kind of people they were, and we know that Putin has a soft spot for those kinds of leaders. So, am I saying that Putin is a great man? No, I'm not. Um, rather, I'm saying it. I need to stop this. Rather, what I'm saying. If we continue to do what we're doing now and break deals and agreements that we had made prior, then we're going to see a lot of problem come from that. And uh, for those of you that don't know, a lot of it's NATO. When uh, Gorbachev, who has also been saying that the relations between the U.S. and Russia have never been worse, um, we promised, the, by, by that I mean we the West, NATO, that we would not go encroaching on areas in Russia, that were the Soviet Union. We weren't going to put uh, NATO alliance uh, weaponry on the border of Russia, making it feel encroached, such as happened to it in World War II. Um, imagine if Russia was putting weapons on the border of Mexico and the United States and said that it was only because they had a problem with Mexico. I think a lot of people in Texas and uh, you know the southern part of the country would have a rather significant problem with Vladimir Putin doing that here. So I can understand his complaint here. The reason I mention it is when you look at the policies of Donald Trump, Jill Stein, who is pretty much Bernie Sanders, she's nothing like Trump, even Joe Stein said, when it comes to matters of nuclear war and conflicts with other countries, regardless of what you think of Trump, Trump is not the dangerous person here. Okay? Trump is not at all the dangerous person here. Trump's the one who wants to take a more Reagan-esque approach. And that means involving America where America needs to be involved, but not forcing itself upon Russia in a way that creates unnecessary problems. And who, who has a problem with the way that that would work? Well, a Russian news presenter, this is from the independent.co.uk, dubbed the Kremlin's chief propagandist, has warned the United States may, any, excuse me, the United States, any impudent behavior towards Moscow could have nuclear implications. Now, this right there, is a sign that the leadership in Russia isn't all that more, more wise than the leadership here. Because regardless of what the problem is, if your answer is a potential nuclear war, then maybe, you know, you're not the right person for the job. Dmitry Kisilev, whose name I just destroyed, who was appointed by Vladimir Putin to head the country's government-owned news agency, made the warning on Monday night's edition of the flagship current affairs program, Vesti and Nidili, which is, of course, news of the week. Relations between the two countries hit a new low on Friday, after Washington accused Moscow of war crimes following a sustained bombardment of the besieged Syrian city of Aleppo. 
where Gary Johnson's last place were, where at least 250,000 people are still living in rebel held east of the city. Now, let's, let's take a, a moment to reflect on exactly how this happened. Okay, Assad is not a good man. He is the sovereign leader of his country, but he's not a good man. Do I think he gassed his own people? No, but I think he housed chemicals without the ability to properly contain them. And that is also an assault on your own people. It's not manslaughter, but it's negligence. So I don't like the man. Um, he has funded his bala. His bala are terrible. Okay, they're terrorists. Barbarians, worse than ISIS. Okay, you get the point. Um, but Assad has chosen to have Russia fight ISIS because even Hezbollah isn't as vile as Russia, as, excuse me, as vile as ISIS. So they bring Russia in by their own free will, and Russia is said to be bombing civilian populations. Now, they said the same thing about the U.S., and I'm one of the few people that stuck up for the U.S. in this matter, and I'll tell you why. Let's say that this, uh, let's see here, it's beanbag. Let's say that this here is Syria. Now, right here, where Princess Leia, I guess, is, um, right there is, right on her face, is where the terrorists are hiding. But right there on her neck? Or where civilians are. Vile regimes, the Vietnamese did this, the Nazis did this, and they move into civilian areas so that you have no choice whatsoever to either stop terrorism by possibly killing a handful of innocents or allowing the terrorism to take root, where the terrorists will likely kill half of the people you would have killed anyway, and then kill even more people when terrorism takes root and bombs go off in marketplaces. So, a very good friend of mine said she would not bomb innocents. Well, then what you do is you give the entire area to ISIS. That's not an easy decision, okay? Every commentator in the world has dreams of what it would have been like if it had been president. Um, I'm no different. That would be the one there that would keep a person up at night. And when you were on your deathbed, you would wonder if you made the right decision. I get it. But I don't think, with the eyes of the whole world watching, that Vladimir Putin, who I've already said isn't necessarily a good man, came flying his planes in specifically to kill innocent people. I don't think that's what Israel did. Um, I don't think I, I don't think most people do that. ISIS does that. Um, North Korea might do something like that. But these are regimes that are known for such actions. This does not add up to what Vladimir Putin would do on purpose, considering the fact that he has been trying to de-escalate much of this in some ways, and in other ways making it worse by buzzing our planes and trying to spy on us on the 4th of July after sending congratulations to Obama. He's not an honest man. He really isn't. But he's not a warmonger either. Relations between the two countries hit a new low on Friday. Oh, I just read that. Excuse me. On Saturday, Russia vetoed a motion put to the UN Security Council demanding an immediate end to the bombing campaign in Aleppo. A rival motion proposed by Russia was also rejected at the meeting. So you've got people like Hillary Clinton here who have been saying that they want to establish a no-fly zone over Syria. Now back to our Star Wars beanie bag here. If the entire red area here is being controlled by Russia and we put a no-fly zone on that saying that we are going to bomb any plane that flies over that, do you realize that you have just declared war with Russia? They control the skies of Syria as the people want. And that's not such a bad idea, considering that a lot of them don't hate the Russians yet as much as they hate us. Um, I still think Russia is going to regret getting involved in this as well. The Ron Paul Donald Trump approach of getting out of what does not concern you is best. I do like Donald Trump's idea of having a safe area uh, where the people of Syria can go until the war is over instead of moving them all over Europe to destroy the culture of the West. I'm in favor of that. 
Um, I don't want them dead, but I don't want to have let anyone into any country they want just to bomb them either. And this is what we're looking at here. This is the context of the environment I'm talking about here. Mr. Kieslov said that there had been a radical change in the relationship between Russia and the U.S. in recent weeks. It's in the BBC there. The loud talk in Washington of a plan B for Syria. Everyone understands what this means. Direct military force in Syria, he said. During Monday's program, a Russian defense ministry spokesman also warned U.S. bombers not to target the Syrian army. We'll shoot them down, com commented Mr. Kishmo. He also said uh, he is also a key of Russia's media operations and has been described as a militant anti-Westerner. It's somebody that Putin's very, very close to. And it's talking about how recently Russia deployed the S-300 anti-aircraft missile system to Syria. It sent three warships armed Malkach missiles from the Black Sea Fleet to the Mediterranean. Now remember, these are weapons that Russia has made. It's not like North Korea moving around weapons that they bought or stole from somebody else. These were actually made by Russia. We're talking about a world nuclear superpower here. And you were just told by the leader himself that there's another approach needed here because Russia is starting to feel like it's being invaded. Um, I don't think that that's the case at all, but you can certainly understand why they feel that way. Um, Zero Hedge. WikiLeaks provides an update on the Assange internet outrage. Now, this is insane to me. Donald Trump says incredibly inappropriate things about women 11 years ago. And again, didn't didn't hurt the woman at all. Made a move, got shot down, laughed at himself. When WikiLeaks talks about Hillary Clinton selling access to the White House and the number of things that have been exposed in WikiLeaks, the media's answer then is to immediately attack the one who leaked the information instead of focusing on the information that was leaked. Don't you wish when you got a speeding ticket that the uh, law worked that way for you? How does Hillary Clinton get a pass? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, it seems that the Obama administration's efforts to save the presidential candidacy of Hillary Clinton is finally starting to yield tangible results, as WikiLeaks just provided the following update that Julian Assange was cut off from using the internet at the Ecuadorian embassy in London, effective Saturday evening. They take the internet away from the man who is telling you the truth, and then want you to not focus on the truth because they don't like the person who gave it. If you fall for that and vote for Hillary, you deserve the hell that you're going to bring on us all. Unfortunately, the rest of us don't. Clearly, the lack of internet for Assange hasn't slowed the release of Hillary's emails, as part nine of the Podesta emails was released yesterday, and part ten was released just hours ago. So remember, these are ten leaks, all more damning than the last, about the kind of person that Hillary is, and you don't think Assange is dumb enough to be running all of this from one computer in an embassy. Give the man some credit. Maybe, maybe it's better that you don't, that way you'll keep underestimating him. The Ecuadorian government prefers to swap gold with Hillary's other political ally, Goldman Sachs, as Bloomberg noted they did back in 2014. Uh, it says just another of the many ways that Hillary's Wall Street relationships have paid dividends. Quid pro quo, Goldman. I love Zero Hedge. Ecuador, one of the only eight countries to adapt the U.S. dollar as its official, official currency, Swapped gold with Goldman Sachs for liquid assets in a side nation and short on cash, according to Loomis Sailors and Company. It does raise a red flag. You think so? Okay, it goes on and on and on. Um, the, the Obama administration is contemplating unprecedented covert action against Russia in retaliation against Russian interference with the U.S. presidential election. Again, deflect, deflect, deflect. Did Russia do it? Maybe. But what are we not supposed to ask? Who is it that allowed the infrastructure to end up so very depleted that this kind of thing could happen? The Obama administration. 
He's been in office for eight years. I said this on the media speaks last Sunday. Um, it stands to reason that in eight years, a lot has changed in computer technology. We have Hillary Clinton using a private email server, and even our regular servers are not secure. That sounds to me like Obama just admitted that Trump was right, that we have a serious problem with cybersecurity in this country. Two former CIA officers who worked on Russia told NBC News that there is a long history of the White House asking the CIA to come up with options for covert actions against Russia. That came out in WikiLeaks. And it goes on and on and on and on. Look them up. There's been 10 releases now. A whopping 10 releases. That matters, people. All of this is brought to you by the Seacrest Motel. We're going to get on to how journalists have been hiding for Hillary, um, how we've got footage showing what looks like a UFO, because we got to get away from the insanity of uh, uh, the election for a while. No, I'm not saying it's aliens. And, I, of course, the biggest Gary Johnson fail. He seems to get them daily. Uh, all of that's coming up. But I want to give a shout-out to the Seacrest Motel, especially since they're not going to be open much longer. When Cedar Point closes Halloween, <coughs> pardon me, then uh, with it, they close the hotel until Cedar Point opens again. Some of the coolest hotels you'll ever see are in Cedar Point. I work at a great one, Legend of Bear Creek in Canton. You're going to want to check it out. Well, you're also going to want to go to the Cedar Point haunted houses, I promise you. While you're there, you're going to want to ride the uh, Millennium Force and the Magnum and the Top Thrill Dragster, and you don't want to spend the fortune on your motel. And you don't want to drive home all sleepy. So do yourself a huge favor and check out the Seacrest Motel. You will be thrilled that you did. Let them know you heard about it on the correct views and you'll get an even better rate. Uh, check this out. This is publicintegrity.org. I don't know if they have ever been on the show before. So welcome aboard to them. Christelle, if you're listening, I have a no sound. I, you know what it might be? I have no idea. We'll see what that does. All right. Journalists shower Hillary Clinton with campaign cash. Why is it that the uh, government is clamping down on what the media is allowed to say from the weeks? I can tell you why. Because the government's knee deep in it, as it's been exposed. Why are we not seeing any media coverage of the kind we would see if a Republican administration was asking that these kinds of things be kept quiet? Well, the journalists start asking these questions because they are knee-deep in it. Here's the proof. Buying of the president, 2016. Journalists shower Hillary Clinton with campaign cash. Far fewer contributions to Donald Trump. This is an analysis uh, from the New Yorker television critic Emily Nausbaum. A newly minted Pulitzer Prize winner spent at the Republican National Convention pen-pricking presidential nominee Donald Trump as a misogynist shyster running an ugly and xenophobic campaign. What Nassibam didn't disclose in her dispatches is she contributed $250 to Democrat Hillary Clinton in April. You're going to say, why is that different from what you're doing, Sam? Because I'm not doing reporting. I'm doing political commentary. I'm doing uh, analysis of what I see. And uh, for some reason, I don't see any sound like that. Um, what Nassibam didn't disclose was the money she gave. Um, Try turning the Bluetooth off. I did. On the nation's left coast, Les Waldron, an Emmy award-winning assignment editor at television station KFMB, a CBS affiliate in San Diego, swung right in July shooting $28 to Trump. And it goes on and on and on and on. There was one uh, $2,800 given to Trump by... Uh, an African-American woman to moderate the presidential debate from Carol Simpson. She was a former World News Tonight anchor in 1992. Um, during the decidedly unconventional election season, during which the media has itself become a prominent storyline, several hundred news professionals have aligned themselves with Clinton or Trump by personally donating money to either one or the other. Nearly all of the money, 96%, has benefited Clinton. About 430 people who work in journalism have, through August, combined, uh, given about $382,000. $14,000 went to Trump. $14,000 compared to $382,000. Now, you want to tell me that there's not a reason that you're hearing about this a lot 
less than you're hearing about the alleged uh, things that Trump had done when we have absolute proof about what Hillary has done? I'm sorry, friends. There, there isn't any other way to put it. There's no... Um, very thirsty, sorry. There's no comparison here. All right, guys, we're going to take a break from the uh, the political this and that and this and that. I promise the dumb deal of the day is going to be great. I promise I'm going to get to how you can get to these free. Like I said, you get one for five, two for seven. They're autographed. The correct views on Hotmail.com, PayPal, five, one, two for seven. If you just get one, make sure you don't even know which one. I'm going to let you know how to get them free at the end of the show. It'll be really easy. You don't have to give me a penny. Um latest ufo sightings and that's um and they've never been on the show before either footage shows what looks like a giant ufo traveling across the sky above california to me it looks like a giant female organ but i'm not supposed to say that because then they're going to say that i hate women amazing footage has been shared online showing an apparent massive spacecraft traveling in a cloud cover apparently recorded over on october on october 10th in 2016 in California, the video shows a spaceship look alike object flying across the sky in a cloud formation and it seems to move with it. Many viewers see it as an unidentified flying object uncloaking itself. They say it looks like a flat circular plate hiding in the cloud. Some note that the clouds are moving around the UFO and since its center is lower than the rest of the UFO is being exposed. They also gave reason why the outer edge is so exposed. They say it's because the craft itself is moving slightly at a different speed than the cloud that it's in. Other viewers suggest the reason maybe UFO becomes visible for a few minutes. They say that heavy winds, um, perfect angle of the sun hitting the UFO. I'll tell you what, and this is why okay, we got sound. This is why I work to cover these kinds of things because I'm not saying that that's a UFO. It looks like the underside of a boat. That's kind of interesting. But I'll say this, and you're seeing it on the screen here. Make sure I'm on screen share. Uh, no, I'm not. That's wonderful. All right, now you see what I mean. Very sorry, listeners. Um, there you go. Okay, I'm not saying that this is a definite, you know, isn't it, isn't it, proof of aliens. People that do that always creep me out a little bit, to be quite honest. But it's possible. The other thing that's possible are there are things that our government does, and a lot of it's not even bad. I mean, you have to make new weaponry, even if for defense. Not every time the government does something quietly is it necessarily terrible. There, that took me forever. But um, I think it's important to mention this could be some kind of technology that we have not seen before. Um, I guarantee some people are going to say that this could be the effects of CERN the kind of thing that's a leading to talk of the Mandela effect of which I did a video on such so correct views Mandela effect. And you decide for yourselves, friends. But I mean if you don't take a break from regular politics once in a while, you lose your mind. So there you go. Someone says Jesus has arrived. Um hopefully it's not mockery. Who knows? I mean you would think that if you saw it. Alright guys, sticker junkie taking us into the dumb deal of the day. Oh, there's the sound. We're going to need the sound when we get to Gary Johnson here. Sticker Junkie. Make your own stickers. And when you do, make sure you mention that you've heard about the sticker making. The genius is there from um, Sticker Junkie from the correct views. Do it at checkout. Do it when you're getting ready to log out. And you're going to save even more money because you're a listener of the show. And that's the way they roll over there. That They support the show. We support them. And you get amazing stickers. All right, friends. I feel bad because Gary Johnson has gotten so many mentions. He's got a dunce cap mailed to him already. Dunce cap of the month, Gary Johnson. This, this pains me because I genuinely liked Gary Johnson. I supported him fervently when Ron Paul dropped out last time. I proudly campaigned for him and went to his uh, speech and genuinely liked him. Somebody somewhere has gotten to Gary Johnson. Somebody's paid off Gary Johnson or either that or he's hit his head or he's lost his mind. I don't know. But he's become a raging leftist overnight. Well, now it gets even worse. 
he has said what well, has to be the dumbest thing that anyone has said on the campaign trail so far this season. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have just gotten off the uh, gotten off the hook here. Just listen. Let me go to screen share so you can okay you can see him saying it. Or worse, it, it, haven't we fought wars over not doing that kind of thing? We are the beacon on the hill. Uh, I don't think life uh, in America has ever been better. You don't think that life in America has ever been better? Our wages haven't gone up proportionally to uh, interest or uh, growth in 25 plus years. Races are more divided than ever. But no, he goes on. We, we get along with each other better. We communicate better with one another. Our we communicate with each other better and we get along better? Is he nuts? America has never been more divided than it is now. I mean, what in the Civil War might have been worse. What the hell is he talking about? It goes on. Let's go back a second. Listen. Better. We we get along with each other better. We communicate better with one another. Our kids are smarter than ever. We our kids are smarter than ever. My generation, Generation X, was made up of a bunch of idiots that didn't know the left from the right and thought that Bill Clinton and Al Gore worked together to create the internet. Stupid people. Um, the millennials are absolutely no better. They think that uh, Bernie Sanders can give them this free and the economy won't crash. Um, most students can't point to Iraq on a map, and that it goes for people my age as well. And Gary Johnson is saying that we have never, our children have never been smarter. Our children can't even write a paragraph without a million spelling errors. Listen to this idiot. Or worse, it, it, haven't we fought wars over not doing that? Let's hear the whole thing. That kind of thing. We are the beacon on the hill. Uh, I don't think life uh, in America has ever been better. We, we get along with each other better. We communicate better with one another. Our kids are smarter than ever. We do have issues, issues. What? You have issues, Gary. You have issues in the head. Loco in the essay. Um, Verrucht. Goodness. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. If you'd like to support what I do, you can do so at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Yeah, through PayPal. Any money you, I get from that goes directly to the show. Um, I've been showing these things, especially on this uh, the second one here. You're going to want to get these before the election. $5 for one, $7 for both. They are autographed by uh, Christelle and I. Maybe you want one free. You want one free now that the show's over. You want one free? All right, I'll tell you how to get one free. Do me a favor and help this poor person. Listen to this. Mom who refused cancer treatment to save her baby is now battling stage for a brain and lung cancer. Um... Gemma and Natal's unborn baby saved her life when her routine 12 week scan revealed she had ovarian cancer. After being told she could only start a new life saving treatment, if the pregnancy was terminated, she opted to save the baby. Um, I personally may not have done that, um, but I respect her decision. Well, now she uh, she's in grave danger, friends. She's in grave, grave danger. She had no symptoms at all. Uh, whatsoever, but uh, now she has lung and brain cancer, and they're in stage four. And her family is trying to raise fifty thousand euros so she can uh, that would be uh, pounds so she can fly to a private Hauwang oncology clinic in Germany. I wonder if that's Dr. Peter Wolf who's going to treat my dad. You know what? Donate anything to her. You could do it right there. There's a donate page. Donate anything to her at all. I don't care what it is. And let me see the screenshot of it. Take a picture on your phone or just tell me. I'll trust you. Uh, I will send it to you. There she is. It's on justgiving.com. Do that and I will see to it that you get a sticker absolutely free. How's that, friends? Good night. God bless. And thank you for listening.